Hi and welcome, today's video comes from Baltimore in the USA, and tells the story of Joe Metheny, the man who invented the human burger, which, surprisingly, hasn't really taken off. I sometimes wonder what the ingredients are, for things like kebab meat and burgers, and after reading this story, I might turn vegetarian. There's not much documented about this story, and what is available, is conflicted, so if I get anything wrong, I do apologize. There is a full confession letter at the end of the video, which was written in the man's own words, so hopefully this will answer any questions of doubt. So let's head over and take a look. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you. Joe Metheny was born on March 2, 1955, in the town of Baltimore, Maryland. Joe did not have the best upbringing, his father was an alcoholic, who died in a car crash when Joe was only six years old. He lived with his mother, Jean Metheny, and his five other siblings. The family didn't have a great deal of money. Metheny would go on to say that his mother neglected the children also stating that she sent the kids to live with other families, in foster-like arrangements. In reality though, she was a single mother who worked three jobs, being a waitress, barmaid, and a food delivery driver, just to provide for the children, so they didn't go hungry and stayed out of care. Metheny was an above-average student, who was always polite as a child. He went through school with no problems, and after graduating, he enlisted in the army, where he served in Germany and Vietnam, from where it's alleged that he became addicted to hard drugs. After leaving the army, Metheny continued to abuse alcohol and drugs, then began to get in trouble with the police, he'd get into bar fights, and would be charged with being drunk and disorderly. Metheny was 6 foot 4 inches tall, and weighing around 450 pound, he quickly got a name for himself as a man not to be messed with. People nicknamed him Tiny, as a result of his large intimidating build. In 1991, Metheny married a local girl, who I couldn't find much information about, apart from they were both drug addicts, and that together they had a son. All throughout his marriage, Metheny continued substance and alcohol abuse, and increasingly started hanging around with groups of homeless people around the area of South Baltimore. But regardless of his drug and alcohol dependency, he still managed to hold down a steady job as a truck driver, which meant the pay was good enough to keep a roof over his head. But this also meant he was away from home for long periods of time. It was when he returned home from one of these long journeys, that he found his wife had cleared the house out and left him, she had taken their six-year-old son along with her. Metheny was furious. He spent the whole night looking for them. He knew she frequented the homeless campsites, and started looking around the Hanover Street Bridge in South Baltimore, a known hangout for homeless people and drug users. Metheny's wife was in hiding, but because she was homeless, and a drug addict, she soon turned to prostitution to fund her habit. She was soon arrested, and her six-year-old son was taken into the care system. Metheny tried to gain custody of his son, but because of his criminal record, and his own addiction, the boy was placed into a foster home. His son going into the care system infuriated Metheny, and he wanted blood. He took an axe and started looking for his wife. He got information that she was living in a campsite under Baltimore's Hanover Street Bridge with another homeless man. He arrived at the bridge and seen two men, Randall Brewer and Randy Piker. Both had taken drugs with Metheny and his wife on another occasion. Both Brewer and Piker denied knowing his wife's location, but Metheny didn't believe them, and flew into a violent rage, killing them both with the axe. Later that night, Metheny said he seriously assaulted, then murdered another two unknown homeless women, and as he was trying to hide the bodies, he noticed a man fishing down by the river. Metheny assumed the fisherman had just witnessed him killing the women, so he ran down to the water and clubbed him to death with an iron bar. He weighted the bodies down with rocks, 
and threw them all into the river. The murders of Brewer and Piker were confirmed by police, but there is no record of the other three being killed, but this could be because nobody reported them missing, as they were homeless. Or, it could be that Joe Metheny just talks a load of old bullshit. Around two weeks later, Metheny was arrested and charged with the murder of Randall Brewer and Randy Piker. But the axe that Metheny used in the murder was stolen from him by Larry Amos and used to kill another homeless man called Everett Dowell. Amos pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter and would serve just over one year in jail for the crime. With no murder weapon, it meant there was not enough evidence to convict Metheny of the murders, and after spending nearly 18 months in Baltimore City Jail, the case collapsed due to lack of evidence, and Metheny was once again a free man. Metheny got his old job back at the Pallet Company and rented a trailer on the isolated property, telling his boss he would keep an eye on the work premises. In 1995, he took prostitutes Kathy Magaziner, who was 45, and Kimberly Spicer, 26, to his trailer before stabbing and strangling them. Metheny then dismembered their corpses and cut off the fleshy parts, which he would use later. The bodies were then buried in shallow graves, then hidden under pallets on the grounds of his works. At the trailer, he mixed the prostitutes' flesh with a mixture of beef and pork, forming it into little human flesh burgers. Over the next several weekends, he would sell these human burgers out of a small barbecue stand that he opened by the side of the road. For weeks, unwitting passers-by, truckers, and townies would all consume bits of human flesh burgers. The human body tastes very similar to pork he said, if you mix it together, you can't tell the difference. That is totally disgusting, still, I bet they taste better than McDonald's. Whenever he needed more meat, Metheny would simply go out and find another homeless victim. He took another prostitute, Rita Kemper, back to his trailer, where he violently assaulted her and started to rip her clothes off. Luckily, Rita was brave enough to make a run for it, and as Metheny turned his back for a second, she ran out of the door and scaled an eight-foot chain fence before the big lump could catch her. She ran straight to a gas station and alerted police, who then arrested Metheny. At this point, Metheny hadn't got rid of Spicer's body. He had been hiding it at the factory site since she had died. Metheny had asked a friend to help bury her. The friend reported it to the police on December 15, 1996. That same day, Metheny was charged with murder. During his interrogation, he willingly offered up a confession and details about each of his murders, even mentioning the murder of the fisherman which he had gotten away with several years before. He also appeared to show no remorse for what he'd done. Apart from one thing. The only thing he was remorseful about was the fact that he had not managed to murder his wife and her new partner. In 1997, Metheny was tried in the Kemper case and was given a 50-year sentence for kidnapping and attempted sexual assault. Metheny was acquitted of trying to murder her. A year later, he was given the death sentence for the murder of Kimberly Spicer. During his sentence hearing, Metheny said that he killed because he enjoyed it, and that he got a rush and a high from it. Although, his death sentence was overturned in 2000, and the sentence for the murder of Spicer was reduced to life without parole. Metheny would serve his sentence in the Western Correctional Institution in Maryland, where he would go on to write a full confession to all his crimes. The letter he wrote is as follows. It all started back in July of 1994. I was at work. I was a truck driver. I was working overtime this one night. Then I got off work and went home as I always did. But when I opened the door and turned on the light, I noticed there was nothing. My old lady had taken everything, including my son and left me. Her leaving was not my problem. But she took my six-year-old son with her. She was an addict and a worthless piece of shit. I would have paid her to get out of my life. All she had to do was take my son over to my mother's house. And she could have had everything else and be gone. I found out about six months later. She had moved on the other side of town with some asshole that had her out selling her ass for drugs. They got busted for drugs and they took my son away from them for child neglect. 
I had no chance of going to social services and trying to get my son back due to my past criminal record. So I took it upon myself, with the hatred I had for these two who lost my son. To go looking for them. I had found out from someone. That they was going under the bridge and getting high with some homeless fuckers who lived under that bridge. I went looking for them. They were not there. But the two homeless fuckers they got high with were down there. They were passed out on some old stinking mattress. And that's where they were when I left. Except they were dead from being chopped up. That same night, I lured the first crack whore down from under that bridge. I got her high and was trying to get information out of her about my old lady's whereabouts. She acted like she didn't know, so I beat the hell out of her and raped her ass, then killed her. I put her in some bushes and went and lured the second bitch down there. I did the same to her as the last one. But as I was about to throw her in the bushes with the other one, I noticed an old black man down by the river, fishing, looking back up at me. I grabbed a steel pipe that was lying by and ran down on him and laid his head wide open. So I put him and the two girls in the river and weighed them down with rocks. That was a very busy night for me. Five murders within about seven hours. I washed up in that river and cleaned up the crime scene as much as I could. Two weeks later. I was arrested and charged with the murders of the two men I chopped up. I spent close to 18 months in Baltimore City Jail, waiting to go to trial. The trial lasted one week and it was thrown out of court because of lack of evidence. I was a free man again. I talked my old boss into giving me my job back at the pallet company. There was a little trailer on the property, so I told my boss to let me stay there and I could keep an eye on his work unit. He agreed to this and gave me the keys to the front gate. The company was on a dead end road and very isolated. It was perfect for what I wanted to do. I took two more prostitutes up there to my trailer. Where I killed and butchered their bodies up. I cut the meat up and put it in some Tupperware bowls, then put it in a freezer. I buried the remains in several shallow graves in the little woods behind the company. Over the next couple weeks, on the weekends, I opened up a little barbecue beef stand. I had real roast beef and pork sandwiches and why not? They were very good. The human body tastes was very similar to pork. If you mix it together no one can tell the difference. Everything was going pretty good. Until I ran out of my special meat. So I lured another bitch up to my trailer. I got her in there and started to rip her clothes off and knock the shit out of her. She was screaming, but there was no one around to hear her except me. And I just kept on laughing at her. I turned around for a split second and that was my mistake. For she ran out the door before I could get to her. There was an 8 foot chain link fence with barbed wire on top of it. Right around the front of the company. There was a stack of wooden pallets next to the fence about 10 feet high. That bitch scaled those pallets like a little monkey and jumped the fence. She ran down to the main road where some guy in a pickup truck picked her up and took her to a nearby gas station. That's where they called the cops. Well I knew the cops were on the way. But I didn't run. I gathered up her clothing, grabbed the keys to the gate and went out and opened it. Soon as I step out the gate, a cop car pulled up. The cop opened his car door and pulled out his gun. He told me to lie on the ground. And that's where it all came to an end. They took me down to book me. She told them that I said I was going to kill her like the rest. Which was true. They had me sitting in a little room down at Homicide, drilling me and damn near kissing my ass. Trying to find out what I'd done. They pulled me out of city jail every day for one month. Taking me back and forth between the company and the bridge. I had them going crazy over at the company, digging up the remains of those two bitches there. Because I had their remains buried in seven different holes. The only thing I feel bad about in any of this. Is I didn't get to murder the two motherfuckers I was really after. And that's my ex old lady and the bastard she got hooked up with. Well that's my story. Horrible but true. Next time you're riding down the road, and you happen to see a barbecue beef stand that you've never seen before, make sure you think about this before you buy a burger. Sometimes you never know who you might be eating. Well that's Methany's story in a letter written by him. It's hardly going to make the bestseller list, but still disturbing to read if it's true. Joe Methany claims to have killed up to 13 people, but was only convicted of murdering two although police think the number is closer to the 13 that Methany claims. Anyway, on August 5, 2017, Methany was found dead in his cell at the Western Correctional Institution in Cumberland. He was 62 years old and died of suspected heart failure. Maybe he should have laid off the burgers. Thanks for watching, please give a thumbs up if you like the video, 
and consider subscribing for more content like this. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.